The nation of Hungary has banned LGBT-friendly curriculum from their public schools, and they're getting some massive pushback from the EU and the bullies in Brussels. In this video, we're going to take a look at the new law that took effect this week in Hungary, how that law fits in with Hungary's return to nation, culture, custom, and tradition, and how that showdown with the EU may indeed result in Hungary's eventual exit. You are not going to want to miss this. Greetings, everyone. Dr. Steve here with you. Great to be with you. As always, we are your daily fake news antidote as each and every day we provide patriotic analysis to help you to think better so you can feel better in these crazy and turbulent times. So if you haven't done so, you know what to do. Make sure to smack that bell and subscribe. But before we begin, gang, we've got an amazing deal for you from our good friends over at Virtual Shield. As many of you know, your Virtual Shield is really the leader in VPNs or virtual private networks on your desktop, tablet, or mobile device, which protects your identity while browsing the internet. And for just this month alone, the month of July, they're offering 50% off their subscription plan for life. You can get half off for the life of your subscription if you sign up in July. It doesn't get better than that. So make July the month. You take the plunge and begin protecting yourself Click that link in the description below and sign up for a risk-free 30-day trial to Virtual Shield VPN today. All right, guys, let's dive right in here. We've got a fascinating development going on in the nation of Hungary. Now, as many of you know, Hungary is governed by the nationalist populist Prime Minister Viktor Orban. He's the head of the Fidesz Party, which is in many respects the Patriot Party of Hungary. They're very conservative, very, very nationalist, very populist. They have a super majority in the Hungarian parliament and together Orban and the Fidesz party, they've been moving Hungary very aggressively to the national and cultural right. The latest move in all this involves a recently enacted law banning schools from using materials seen as promoting homosexuality and pro-LGBT values. The bill that was passed was originally intended to fight pedophilia, but amendments were later added to ban the promotion and portrayal of homosexuality or sex change to minors as well. The law, which went into effect this week, has received significant support from Hungary's closest ally, that's the conservative nation of Poland, as well as the nation of Slovenia. But the law has provoked a massive outcry from the European Union. Politico is reporting that in a heated debate around the European Council table in Brussels, leaders from Western Europe in particular excoriated the law, saying that it was a slap in the face of European values of tolerance and inclusion. In fact, Mark Rutte, the uh, prime minister of the Netherlands, he went so far as to basically say either Hungary needs to repeal this law or they need to leave the EU bloc. And there are already calls for sanctions against Hungary. In response to the outcry, Viktor Orban has doubled down, writing on his Facebook page, quote, the European Parliament and the European Commission want that we let LGBTQ activists and organizations into the kindergartens and schools. Hungary does not want that. Here, Brussels bureaucrats have no business at all. No matter what they do, we will not let LGBTQ activists among our children. He went on to reiterate that this is ultimately an issue of national sovereignty, not a one-size-fits-all standardized value system superimposed by a bunch of bureaucrats over unique cultures, customs, and traditions. Now, this law comes on the heels of a previous law that was recently passed in Hungary, which ended the legal recognition of transgenderism in the nation. Now, you definitely want to check out a video, a deep dive video I did on that, where I get into the details of the law and what it means. And the upshot is that the law forces transgender people to have to affirm the same gender as designated on their birth certificates, which makes it virtually impossible for people to legally change their gender. So many are arguing that the law does indeed institute a ban on so-called gender reassignment therapy and surgery altogether in Hungary. So the LGBT ban in schools is but the latest in a series of comparable laws. Now, there are at least two takeaways from this latest clash between Hungary and the EU. And I think that's very important to understanding what's going on here in terms of the big picture. There really are at least two dynamics that are operative here in this clash. The first takeaway is that this clash is but the latest example of a massive worldwide dynamic known as re-traditionalization. Okay? It's a fancy-schmancy word for the rather simple but profound trend 
where populations are increasingly returning to their customs, cultures, and traditions in response to the secularizing processes of globalization. Because globalizing institutions, like the EU, challenge the traditions and customs, the religions, languages of local cultures, its processes tend to be resisted with a countercultural backlash. In the face of threats to localized identity markers, populations are reasserting their religiosity, kinship, national symbols, all as mechanisms of resistance against globalizing dynamics. And we're seeing this all over the place, but particularly in Europe and particularly in relation to counter LGBT measures. So a few years back, the Putin administration in Russia implemented what's been called the, so, the so-called gay propaganda law, which seeks to protect minors from any advocacy of what Russians call non-traditional sexual relations. So Hungary's law is very similar to this Russian law. And I've done a video on how the nations of Georgia and Estonia have banned LGBT pride events in their nation. Now, of course, the nation of Poland has recently put into effect a near total ban on abortions. I mean, these are all examples of retraditionalization of populations re-embracing traditional values and norms as mechanisms of resistance against the anti-cultural, secularizing dynamics of globalization. And Hungary has been on the forefront of this retraditionalist trend, particularly when it comes to reversing its demographic decline. The University of London scholar Eric Hoffman has documented what he calls the demographic contradiction inherent in liberal globalism. In other words, because liberal globalism redefines a human person as a sovereign individual and redefines the family as a mere lifestyle choice, that affirmation requires, it necessitates the freedom not to reproduce. Globalist societies redefine reproduction as a mere personal preference, and so globalist societies tend to experience demographic implosion. And that's what ha that's happened to Hungary. And so the Orban administration put into place pro-family measures about 10 years ago to encourage Hungarians to get married and start families. And you'll definitely want to check out the video I did on how Hungary has been able to effectively reverse their demographic decline, where they're seeing nothing short of a major baby boom going on throughout the nation. And so I do think it's important to see that this ban on LGBT propaganda and the like in relation, I think we need to understand in relation to this larger pro-family project that's trying to reverse significant demographic decline. So that's the first takeaway. Hungary is clearly part of this worldwide trend of retraditionalization where populations are returning to their traditional cultures, customs, and traditions. But there's a second major takeaway in all of this, and it's no less significant, and it's quite specific to Europe. Hungary and the EU are in a standoff over what it means to be European. Now, obviously, this has been going on for some time now, and it was originally foregrounded with Viktor Orban's very principled stand against the EU when he refused to take in migrants in 2015 during the migrant crisis, where people were just pouring into Europe from Northern Africa and the Middle East, he said, in effect, Hungary is our territory, and we will make this decision as to whether we're going to accept all of these migrants. But of course, the Eurocrats in Brussels responded by saying, uh, sorry, no, you renounce that sovereignty when you join the EU. We make these decisions now, you don't. And this has been the tension in the EU, at least over the last decade. Each member nation is being forced to ask, did we really renounce our national sovereignty in the matter of European citizenship or did we not? And of course, that question was answered loud and clear in Britain, where Brits recognized that the only answer to that question that the Bullies in Brussels allowed was, yes, you renounced your national sovereignty when you joined the EU. And so Britain said, bye-bye, we're out of here. Hungary, as well as Poland, are in the midst of the same type of showdown. Do they have the right to retraditionalization? Do they have the right to enact pro-traditional family policies? Or are they imprisoned to the demographic contradictions of liberal globalism enforced by the EU? So these are the larger issues that I think are facing Hungary and Brussels. And we'll most certainly be keeping our eyes on how things develop, and even more importantly, whether they'll be resolved in a manner comparable 
to Brexit. Now, before you go, you will definitely want to check out my latest video. I just uploaded it on the state of Pennsylvania joining Arizona and Georgia and conducting a forensic audit of the 2020 election. This indeed may be a game changer. You're not going to want to miss it. So make sure to click on the link and I will see you over there. God bless.